loopcommunity.com 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 check one two testing one two three four Testing one two, check check one two. One two, check check one two. Loopcommunity.com Hey everybody. Hey everybody, how's it going? We're going to get started here in a few minutes. If you are watching, go ahead and uh, type in the chat box. Maybe your name and where you're from, what church you're from. Be nice to know who's all here. loopcommunity.com be nice to know who's all here
loopcommunity.com. loopcommunity.com 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 everybody how's it going good afternoon hope everybody is doing well hey if you're uh, watching go ahead and type your name and where you're from in the chat box kind of see who's all here we're gonna get started in just a minute loopcommunity.com 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 Hey everybody, glad you are here with us today on this uh, beautiful afternoon. I'm in Chicago, Illinois, and uh, it's a nice day today. Anyways, I'm glad you, glad you guys are uh, here. If you can go ahead and uh, if you're watching, just type your name in, where you're from in the chat box, maybe type the name of your church. So my name is Matt McCoy, and I am uh, in Chicago, Illinois. I'm a worship leader at a church called Harvest Bible Chapel, and I play with a band called Vertical Church Band. And when I'm not doing that, I am running a website called Loop Community, and uh, I'm passionate about teaching worship leaders how to use loops and multi-tracks in worship. And uh, there's just so much you can do with um, using technology and leading worship to really help enhance what you're doing. And... Uh, Let's talk first of all about just why people even use tracks. So, you know, you see a computer up on stage at a lot of different churches or maybe at a concert like Hillsong or Passion, 
And a lot of times what they're doing is they're actually running tracks underneath what the band is already doing. So everybody's on a click track. And then also everybody in the band can hear cues that say like verse, two, three, four. But what's cool with these tracks is it can really help enhance what your band is already doing. So it can either enhance what you're doing, but it can also replace an instrument. Let's just say your drummer doesn't show up or your bass player doesn't show up. Then you can play with a bass track and it'll fill in that empty space. So right now we're even listening to a track for Oceans. Um, and you know, there's just like, there's some bells in there, there's an arpeggiator. And those are all just elements that can help enhance the sound of your band and fill in some of the dead space and kind of just make what you're doing sound really professional and full. So that's, that's one of the reasons why people are using tracks. Um, and what we're going to do today is I'm going to give you an intro of how to use Ableton Live in worship. Um, so Ableton Live is a very, very popular music software that you've probably heard of before. And what's cool about it is you can use it to either make your own tracks or record a song, or you can also use it to play back tracks. You can think of it as like a glorified metronome. It can keep your tempo, but it can also play back tracks that your band is using. And it is probably the best software out there for this. Um, if there was something better, I would probably be, I would be teaching you that. But, you know, when you see a laptop up on stage, like I would say like 90% of the time, it is they're running Ableton Live to do it to run tracks. It's just the most popular software out there for this. So, um, and a lot of people are just intimidated by it at first. And so they don't want to use it because they just think that it's going to be like way too complicated to learn. And my goal today is just to break it down and make it really easy for you. So that when you leave this webinar, by the way, this is the first in our summer webinar series. We've got a ton of cool classes that are going to be happening. So make sure you check out our Facebook page and sign up. We're going to talk about all sorts of stuff, how to build your own tracks, how to customize tracks, how to use controllers, how to use iPads. It's going to be fun. And this is the first one, so welcome. Congrats. Um, hello to uh, Jeremy Brown in Ann Arbor, Michigan. I like Ann Arbor. I've played at a church there. There's a vineyard church there I've played at. Kyle Rex, welcome from State College. Paul from Dublin, Ohio. Aaron from Vero Beach, Florida. Welcome. Um, glad you guys are here. So anyways, let's, let's go and dive in and look at Ableton Live. I'm going to stop the music. And let's pull up Ableton Live. And when you first pull up Ableton Live, this is what you're going to see. Now, it can seem intimidating at first, and that's why a lot of people, I feel like, are hesitant to do this, but it's actually really easy. And I think after this session, you'll be like, oh, okay, this is good. I can do this. So what we're looking at right now is when you first pull up Ableton Live, you're going to see this, this screen. And Ableton is built with two different views. The first view that we're looking at, this is called Session View. And it's made up of these vertical audio tracks. So I've got two audio tracks here. And then it's made up of these horizontal lines that go across. And these are called scenes. So each row here is called a scene. And think of a scene as a song. So right now what I've got is I have eight songs in my set list, and I have two instruments. So that could be like drums, bass, electric, and so forth. The other view in Ableton Live is called Arrangement View. And you can get to the other view by just hitting the Tab key or hitting the little icon in the top right corner. And Arrangement View looks like your standard music software, like Logic, Pro Tools, GarageBand, where you've got audio tracks, but now instead of them being vertical like the other view, they are horizontal. So they run down the timeline from left to right. You can see the time timeline down here. So I could have tracks, and notice that each track has mute buttons, solo buttons, record buttons, volume levels, and so forth. Now this view that we're looking at is really great for building your own tracks, or for customizing tracks, or for recording your own music. You can also play back tracks in this view. However, there's pros and cons of each, each one. Um, I prefer to run tracks in the other view, and that's called session view. And that's what we're looking at here. And this is what most people are using. However, you can run tracks in either view. Um, but I'm going to show you today how you can run tracks in this view just because it's the most popular. 
So let's go ahead and just start from scratch, and let's build a set list for this weekend at our church. So we've got two tracks, and I'm going to rename this first track. I'm going to call it, um, whoops, I'm going to right-click, I'm going to call it Band Cues. And this is where we're going to put all our band cues. On the second track, I'm going to right-click, rename, and we're going to call it Loops. And this is where we're going to put all of our loop tracks. Okay, and we're going to do four songs in our set list, so I'm just going to hit the delete key, and we're going to make it just so we have four songs here. Four songs, two tracks. Simple. Now let's go ahead and start picking audio files for this set list. Over in the left-hand side of the screen, this section is called your live file browser. Now this top section where it says categories, this is really important if you're going to be using Ableton Live to record and make your own music. So if you're looking for pad sounds, then you can kind of find different pad sounds here. Or if you're looking for drums. Also you can find audio effects, compressors, delays, reverbs, and you can drag these and put them on any track. Anyways, this section, we can save this for another workshop. Maybe the one that we're doing later in a couple weeks, we're doing one on building your own loops from scratch, and we're going to use this section a lot. But today, since we're just running tracks, we're going to use this section down here called Places. And Places is a just a way to access files on your computer really quickly. So I have a folder here that says Desktop, and it will show you, it'll show me any files that I currently have on my desktop. Um, let's go to, uh, I have a folder on my computer called Worship Songs, and these are all songs that I've downloaded from Loop Community. So let's pick our first song. Let's just say we're going to do, as our first song, we're going to do um, Forever Rain. So I'm going to open up this folder, and notice that there's three files available here. So this is what's called a split track. If you go to loopcommuter.com, you'll see that each song has an option as um, split track or multi-track. We're going to look at both of those. Right now, let's look at a split track. So a split track, you get three files. It says the song title, the key of the song, the tempo of the song, and then what that file is. So as the split track, what we're going to do is we're going to drag the band cues in right here to the band cues track. And then we're going to drag the stereo loop file here. The split track is just a click pan left and a loop pan right. You would only use this if you're going to run these from iTunes or something. But since we're using Ableton, we're going to use the band cues and the stereo loop track. So notice that there are play buttons on each of these clips here. You don't want to use these play buttons because if you do, Intro, two, it's going to play three, that clip. Four. But now they're not playing at the same time because I clicked on them separately at different times. So instead of hitting these play buttons, what you want to do is use the play button that's over here on the far right side of the screen. So let's rename our first row. I'm going to right click, rename, and we're going to call it Forever Rain. That's our first song. And notice there's a play button here. I'm going to hit play, or launch is that the technical term for this. Intro. And it's going to launch or play. Four both of those audio clips at the same time. So now they're in sync with each other. Cool, so I've got band cues and I have loops. Let's do another song. Our next song will be, how about, um, how about Our God? So let's drag our cues here and our stereo audio file here. Let's rename our second song to Our God. And let's hit play and see what happens. Intro, two, three, four. Cool. All right, so we've got our two songs. Now, if you want, you can change the color of these clips by just holding Command and right-clicking. And you'll get a color palette that you can choose the color. You can also change the color of the song title. I like to do that just because I feel like it's easier to see visually. Okay, so we've got two songs in our set. Let's do another song. Um, and this one's going to be in 6-8, different time signature. It's how he loves. So I'm going to do cues here and stereo track here. Let's also change the color of these. Right click. All right, let's do, let's use yellow. How he loves. Okay, we're going to talk about multi-track in a little bit. But for now, let's just say that you decide that you want to do Our God is Greater first. What you can do is just click and drag and drop and reorder those songs 
over here, which is really nice. If you're running tracks in Arrangement View, it's not that easy to do it. So that is another um, pro of using Session View to run your tracks. Okay, so um, we've got three songs. Now, we don't have a metronome, so let's talk about a metronome. Up in the top left corner of the screen, this whole section here is called the Metronome Control Center. So you can tap in a tempo. You can click and drag to set your tempo. Or you could type in a tempo in, so let's make it like 140. And here's our time signature, 4-4. Four, four. And then this button turns the metronome on and off. So we're going to turn it on. And let's go ahead and play Our God is Greater and see what happens. Intro, two, three, four. Okay, so the metronome is playing. However, it's not in time with the track. And the reason it's not in time with the track is because the metronome is playing at 140, but Our God is Greater is should be playing at 105. And again, I know that because of the song title. So it says Our God in the key of B, and Our God is at 105. So what we need to do is we need to tell Ableton, okay, when we play Our God is Greater, change the tempo, or change the metronome, to 105. So just right-click on Our God and go to Edit Launch Tempo, and you can just type in 105. And now notice that when I hit Play on Our God, it's going to launch the metronome at 105. Intro, two, three, four. And now it's in time perfectly. You have to do the same thing for Forever Rain because otherwise Intro, it's just going to stay two, at what you three, last told it to four. do. So it's still at 105. So let's go ahead and change this. Forever Rain is at 83. And how he loves, let's right click on that one. That's at 74. Okay. Now we're going to need to change the time signature because how he loves is at 6 8. So I'm going to right click and you can just go to Edit Launch Time Signature and type in 6 8. Here we go. Intro. One, two, three. And I'm also going to type in the time signature for Forever Rain. This song, I'm going to do 2 8 because I want those uh, eighth notes in there so it's easier for the drummer to stay along. Intro. Two, three, four. A little easier to stay stay together. And our God is greater. Let's make that 4-8. So what's cool is you can use whatever time signature you want here and, that, and reorder your songs. Now, let's go ahead and talk about a multitrack because the benefit of a multitrack is that... So if we play our God is greater... Intro, two, let's go ahead and listen three, to it for a second. Four. Now, if you didn't like the piano volume and you wanted to turn the piano down... You couldn't do that because it's just a premixed audio file. The benefit of a multi-track is that instead of one premixed audio file, you get every instrument as its own track. So then you can customize it all you want. So let's look at a multi-track. And um, I've got a couple here. Let's see, which one could we do that would be, be a good one for a demo? Let's do... Um, this is Amazing Grace, so by Phil Wickham. So I'm going to drag the cues in to the cue track, and now you can see I have each instrument as its own track, and I can choose whatever I want to bring in. So if I just want the electric guitars and the programming, notice if you drag and drop over here, it creates a track for you. I also want the BGVs and the acoustic. I don't need the bass or the drums. So let's go ahead and right-click on these and colorize them, of course. Okay, and check it out. I can also just type in a semicolon and then type the BPM in. 98 BPM, semicolon, and then the time signature, 44. That's kind of a shortcut for you guys. Let's hit play and see what it sounds like. Intro. Two, three, four. <laughs> So I've got the electric guitar track, I've got the synth line, I've got the BGVs. You can turn things up and turn things down using these faders, however, I don't think it's good to use these faders because if you adjust this fader here, it's going to adjust the volume of any of the tracks that are in that column or in that track. So if you want to um, adjust the volume of individual clips, you can double click on them and down here, there's a volume fader that lets you turn up and down that individual audio track, which is very helpful. You can also right-click on it 
and go to deactivate if you just want to mute that clip. That's helpful. Let's activate it again. I also noticed that my band cues for Argot are really quiet. So I'm going to click on that and let's just turn them up to kind of uh, equalize them. I, I actually like to just kind of click through all the band cues. And you can kind of just visually tell um, the volume of each one. And I try to match them all so they're pretty similar. Because you don't want some songs screaming at you um, or whispering at you. Okay. So, um, let's go. So, I've got my four songs. You can reorder them by just clicking and dragging. This is Amazing Grace is now first. And uh, you can also change the colors, by the way, of the track titles, which is just more of a luxury if you want. Okay. Now, let's just say you get into rehearsal and you're like, man, this song actually feels really slow. I want to speed it up. Or, um, the key is too high and I actually need to like change the key and bring it down. You can do that in Ableton. It's one of the greatest features of Ableton and it's called warping. Now warping sounds like some scary word or Star Wars word but really what we're doing is uh, warping is time stretching audio so speeding audio up, slowing audio down without it losing its timing or its quality. And the reason that warping is really great in Ableton is because this software is actually designed and developed for DJs. So if you've ever heard a remix where they take a Katy Perry song and a techno song and they mash them up together, two songs that were at original different tempo, tempos and different keys but they sound like they're the same song, what they're doing is they're using warping and remixing them together. And we get to use that in the church when we're leading worship which is cool. So um, to warp it's really simple. There's a button down here that says warp. Now before you hit this warp button Let's talk about a few things. I will tell you that th what we're about to talk about is probably like when I hear from people having trouble with Ableton Live, 90% of the time it's a around this issue. And it's very easy to do, but if you don't follow uh, the right steps, it can kind of mess you up and the tracks can get out of sync and it's annoying. So first things first, when you first download Ableton Live, the first thing you want to do is go to Live Preferences and there's an option under Record, Warp, and Launch that's called Auto Warp Long Samples. And you want to make sure that that's turned off. Because we want to do this manually. We don't want the software just to warp it for us. So make sure that's off. That's going to save um, you a lot of stress, I promise. Okay, so then the next thing you want to do before you warp... So let's, we're going to go ahead and warp um, Our God is Greater. Before you, before you hit this warp button, the first thing you want to do is make sure that this tempo box in the top left corner says the original tempo of the song. So right now it says 98. That would not be good. Let's go ahead and change it to 105 because that's the original. And then I'm going to hit warp. And what warping did, let's go and zoom in and I can show you. Warping went through and it analyzed. It analyzed the audio and it found all of the downbeats in the audio. And it added little markers next to the downbeats. And now that it knows where the downbeats are, it has a reference of how to speed it up and slow it down. So we're at 105. Now you want to make sure you warp the band cues as well, because if you don't keep those two warped together, then they're going to get out of sync with each other. So now that they're warped, let's go ahead and hit play. Intro, and while two, it's playing, three, I can actually four. click and drag on the tempo box. And notice the tempo is going to change, and the tracks stay in time with it. You could go as fast as you want. You could go up to like 999. And believe it or not, at 999, it's actually still in sync with each other, which is cool. So you can kind of set your tempo. Now let's just say you're like, okay, well, I, yeah, I want to play this at 110. So I can change it over here now. So it's going to play at 110. Intro and let's two, talk about if you want to actually change the key now. So if you double click on the audio file, this brings up the clip overview window. And there's a knob in the bottom left corner that says transpose. And this knob will transpose um, up half steps and down half steps. So let's go up two half steps. So we were in the key of B. Now we're in the key of uh, C sharp. So let's hit play. Intro. Two, three, four. And you can hear it transpose to whatever key you want it to be in. Now I'm going to show you a trick. Let's go and slow it down a little bit. And let's go up. Okay, so what I want to show you, I'm going to turn the metronome off. 
Do you hear how the audio is a little bit choppy? So it's actually a very choppy. What you want to do to fix this is down here there is a box that says beats and this is your warping mode. Beats would work really good if what we were warping was just a drum track. But this has like a pad in it and a piano and all sorts of stuff. So I'm going to change this to complex and listen to how much smoother it gets. Much smoother. Let me change it back to beats so you can hear it. Four, two, three, four. Choppy, and now here it's smooth. So I changed both of these to complex. If you don't have Ableton Suite or Standard, you won't have complex mode, but you could choose it to tones or texture, and that will also do the trick. Now, you might be sitting there thinking, well, this takes way too long to warp. Actually, you can do it really quickly. Let's go ahead and warp This Is Amazing Grace, and I'll show you how fast you can do it. I'm going to hold Shift and just select all the clips for This Is Amazing Grace. Let's set our tempo box to 98, hit Warp, change it to complex, and you're done. Every single clip now in This Is Amazing Grace has been warped, and Intro. I can change Two, the three, tempo. Four. You can change the tempo, and you can also you could select them all if you wanted and change the key by just transposing. So warping is a very uh, valuable tool, and you can it, it's really not complicated. You just need to follow those correct steps. Make sure that this box up here says the original tempo before you hit the warp button, and you're good to go. Okay, let's talk about audio routing. How do we actually get this audio out of our computer and into the sound system at our church? So I'm going to use my headphone jack, and what we're going to do is we're going to send the click and the cues out of the left-hand side of my headphone jack, and we're going to send the tracks and the loops out of the right-hand side of my headphone jack. So this is Audio 101, so no one kill me for this if it bores you to death, but a lot of times people think, well, my headphone jack only has one output because it's one headphone jack. But the truth is, is that actually your headphone jack has two outputs. You've got the left-hand side and you've got the right-hand side. So we're going to utilize both of those sides to kind of split the click and loops apart. The reason we want to split them is because we don't want people in the crowd to hear the click and the, and the band cues. That would not be good. So... To, uh, to do this, I'm going to go to the right hand, uh, bottom right-hand side of the screen, and there's a button that says I.O. It's a little teeny black button. And what I.O. means, in and out. Um, so it opened up the in and out settings for every channel. Now what I can do is I can manually set the outputs for each of these channels. If you're using an interface, you could have multiple outputs. You know, your headphone jack only has two, but if you plugged in a USB interface, you could have like eight outs. And then you could send each track down its own channel to your front of house board, and your sound guy can mix it. That's pretty cool. Well, it, well we're just using our headphone jack for now. So the top white boxes, these are audio inputs. If you're using Ableton to record, then these matter to you. But for us, they don't. We're just going to look at these outputs down here, where it says audio 2. Like, where is it going? Right now, everything's going to the master, which means all of this audio here is going over here down, out the master channel. So what I like to do is I'm going to set the band cues. I'm going to tell it to go external out. I'll put 1. 1 is left and 2 is right. You just have to remember that. And now what I can do is uh, over here on the right-hand side, Q out is your metronome. That's just something you have to remember. So the metronome up over here in the top left corner, this just goes out of Q out. So I'm going to change that to 1 as well. The click volume is this blue headphone knob here. And master out, because all these other tracks are going out the master, I'm going to set that to 2. Cool, so now I can hit play. Intro, two, and the three, click four. is panned left, and the loop is panned right. Now to actually hook that up in your sound system, I'm going to show you a diagram. If you go to Loop Community and go to Training, and then go to Loop University. We have a ton of free training videos and diagrams that you can check out. And a lot of the stuff we're talking about today are on videos here. Um, but I have a diagram here called Basic Hookup Diagram. Let's open it up. And this is how you're going to hook it up into your sound system. So you've got your computer. And we're going to come out of our headphone jack with this. Uh, this is like a cable you can get for 3 bucks on Amazon. 
It's a headphone cable that splits to two quarter inch cables, the left side and the right side. And we're going to go into two different direct boxes. One is for our click, and this one is for our loop. The click, you're going to send that to however you're going to however you get audio to your band. So if you have a church with in-ear monitors, then you have climbed the highest mountain, and uh, or the hardest mountain at least. And uh, you're going to just send that click to your band because then everybody in your band can hear the metronome and hear those band cues. First, two, three, four, and it's so helpful in rehearsal because now nobody is questioning or wondering like what the order of the song is. It's create that alone is going to make your life easier. Uh, the loop you're going to just send that to your front of house and you're going to tell your sound guy to crank it. Now you need to think of think of this as just another instrument in your band, and you need to tell your sound guy to turn it up because it's really just going to supplement what you're already doing. Okay. So let, that's audio routing. Um, I have another diagram, by the way, that is a multi-channel diagram. So if you're going to use an interface to do this, this is kind of what it would look like. You come out of your computer into an audio interface with like maybe eight outs or six outs, and you're going to go into a different direct box for each instrument. And then now your sound guy can mix it. All right. So um, before we move on, let's just talk about uh, loop community since we're here at the site and what loop community is it's a, is it's a website where you can download tracks for worship songs so if you know how to make your own then you can make your own and then you can upload them to loop community and sell them and every time they sell you make money um, if you don't know how to make tracks or you get in a pinch and at the last minute and you just need to buy one then you can come to loop community and search for a song and download it so we have it's kind of like the iTunes for worship tracks. We've got tracks made by worship leaders, but we also have tracks made by artists. So, and those are those are what's called master tracks. And these are tracks that come directly from the record label or directly from the recording. So, let's just say you're looking for this is amazing grace. I'm going to search this is amazing grace. We're going to search for the song we want. And uh, You'll notice that there's a couple options here. There's This is Amazing Grace by Phil Wickham, or there's This is Amazing Grace by Bethel. Let's do the Phil Wickham version. And you're going to get a bunch of options here, which is cool. So we've got the original master track. If you want those, you can click Details and kind of see what tracks come with it, what key, what tempo, listen to it. And then here's your options, split track or multi-track. Remember, split tracks are the ones we used first where you can't mix them. Multi-tracks are the ones where each audio file comes um, for each instrument. The green tracks, these are tracks made by worship leaders from all over the world. And you can open it up, see what tracks come with it, and you can buy the split track for 10 bucks or the multi-track for 20. So that's what Loop Community is. So if you just need tracks or if you make tracks, this is the place for you. So check it out um, if, you, if you need tracks. Now let's talk about how do we control our tracks. So one of the questions I get a lot is, all right, so who in the band should actually start and stop your tracks? And this comes down to preference, really. So sometimes you'll look up at the stage and you'll see a maybe the drummer running the tracks. Or maybe you'll see the laptop back by the keyboard player. Or maybe you'll see the laptop down at the feet of your worship leader. Let's talk about if you want your drummer or your keyboard player to run it. Now, what you don't want to have happen is after the song, they lean over to their computer, try to find their mouse, and then click, you know, try to move the mouse over, and then click on the next song. Intro, two, three. And then three. it just causes, like, a very awkward transition because there's a lot of time. So we want to make sure that the transitions are tight and smooth. So what we're going to do is we're going to just add key commands. And uh, so all he has to do is lean over to the computer and hit 1, and it'll start song 1, or hit 2 on the keyboard, and it'll start song 2. And to do that, you just hit the key in the top right corner that says key. <laughs> so there's a button right here that says key. Let's hit that. And now anything that you see that turns orange can be assigned to a key on your laptop keyboard. So I'm going to click on This is Amazing Grace. I'm going to hit 1. Our God is Greater and hit 2. Forever Rain, 3, and then click on How He Loves and make it 4. 
let's leave key mode, and now that we're out of key mode, I can just hit button three, Intro, and two, it starts song three. three. Four. I could hit the space bar to stop the song. Hit button one, Intro, and it starts two, song one. Three, four. Hit button Intro, two, and it two, starts song three, two. Four. I'm actually using a wireless uh, keyboard right now, so that actually might be cool. You could, you know, put the computer backstage or something and then give your drummer just a wireless Bluetooth keyboard to control them. Um, so let's talk about if the worship leader wants to, ro wants to run them. And this is my preference, just because I feel like no one in the band knows better of when you want to start a song, when you want to stop a song, when maybe you want to say something. Um, no one knows really knows that better than the worship leader. So what we're going to do is we're going to use, you know, since I'm a guitar player, I don't have my hands free. And because I don't have my hands free, I'm going to use my feet to start and stop my tracks. Because again, I don't want to be leaning over, you know, to my computer in between songs and, you know, clicking on my keyboard to start tracks. So we're going to use my, hand, my feet. And we're actually going to use a controller called the Looptimus. And hopefully you have heard of this. Maybe not. But I'm going to go to the website. And I'm going to show you just kind of what we're, what we're looking at here. If we go to Tools and go to Looptimus. And then I'm going, to, I'm going to pull one out here. I've got a Looptimus controller here. And... Um, the Loop to Misfit controller is really, it's designed and built for worship leaders. And there's a ton of stuff you can do with it. I'm going to just show you um, uh, just a few things that you can do. One, one thing that you can do is uh, you can use it to even sync up to your electric guitar player's guitar pedals so that the tempos stay in sync. Um, so when you start a song, it actually changes the tempo on your guitar player's pedal, which is sweet. Another thing you can do is... Use it just to start and stop your tracks. So you can see that there's a next and previous button. Those cycle through pages, and each page has six buttons: one, two, three, four, five, six. So you can have 20 pages full of six songs each. So that's a lot of songs. So what we're going to do is we're just going to use bank one or page one, and I'm going to assign song one to this button, song two to this button, song three to this button, song four to this button, five, and so forth. And then I'm going to make the stop button be our global stop button. And it's really easy to assign. All you do is go to Ableton Live, and instead of hitting the key button, we're going to hit the button to the right that says MIDI. And now anything that you see that turned blue can be assigned to an external controller. This could be a keyboard. This could be a Novation Launchpad. This could be some sort of MIDI device that you've got. It could be a Looptimus. So then you just click on the song, and in the same way, like we did with the key commands, you press the button on your controller that you want to control that song. So click on This Is Amazing Grace, hit the button, let's do the next song, and you can see it's, it's assigning that button to the song. Forever Rain is going to be the next button, How He Loves is the next button. And then I'm going to make the global stop button at the top center of the screen, uh, the stop button, just in case, you know, something happens and I need to kill everything, I can stop it there. Now let me close out the MIDI uh, mapping mode, and now I can just start and stop the tracks with my feet. Intro. Song two, one. Three, four. Hit hit uh, song four, and it can jump Intro. to song four. Let's do song two. Intro. Two, three. Stop. Intro. Song three. Two, three, four. Very easy. Another really cool thing that you can do with Looptimus is play pads, which is really sweet. Um, if you're interested in that, we're doing a webinar in a couple weeks um, on uh, Looptimus, and we're going to show you all the cool stuff you can do with Looptimus, but you can actually use it to play pads with your feet on the fly spontaneously. And the way that it works is uh, next and previous, actually what they do is just cycles through the keys, and you choose the key of your song, so A, B flat, B, C, and then each of these buttons, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, the one the one button will play the one chord of the key of C. The four chord will play the four chord of the key of C. So it'd be like C and then F and then five but the the fifth button plays the five chord, which is A G. And it's really cool because you can then play pads and do transitions all with your feet using Looptimus. So this is a really rad controller. 
Um, if you go to looptimist.com, you can kind of watch some other videos on how that works, and you can also order them from the website. They're $2.99. So let's go back to Ableton Live. Now, uh, Ableton works on Mac and PC, and it looks exactly the same on both platforms. Ableton comes in three versions, intro, standard, and suite. Intro is $99.00. Uh, and then standard goes up from there. I think it's like $3.99. Now, everything we've done today, you can do in intro for $99. And that's like really affordable for what this software does for recording and playback. If you're going to get into making your own tracks and getting really crazy with it, um, you know, coming up with your own loops or recording your own songs, then you're probably going to want to get standard or sweet because you get more sounds with it and more instruments. The main limitation of live intro is that you can only have eight songs in a set list here, so eight rows, mm -hmm. and you can only send four audio outputs at once. So we're only using two here, just click left and loop right. But if you want more than four, then you're going to need to get live standard. Um, and if you go to Loop Community, and if you go to Tools and go to the Shop, this is where you can, if you'd like, you can purchase Ableton Live intro. If you go to uh, software, and we have a bundle for 99 bucks, you get that, and you get a multi-track of your choice. We just give you a promo code, and you can you can uh, download that. But you can also download standard or sweet if you want. So um, hopefully that gives you a really good idea of how to use live to um, run tracks in worship. There's so much you can do with it. We've really only scratched the surface in this session. Um, there's some guys who are using it to run lyrics with ProPresenter, and actually we're teaching a webinar in about a week on that. So think about it. That's cool, right? If your songs are already set to an arrangement, then why not also have the lyrics change? So whenever that guy says Q or a verse, two, three, four, how about the lyrics actually change and go to the verse slide? You can sync it up with ProPresenter. You can also sync up your uh, tracks um, with lighting cues which is pretty rad as well. So we've got some more webinars coming this summer. If you want to sign up, go to our Facebook page and uh, pick one of those. Invite your friends. If you know someone who you think, oh, man, this would be so helpful for them, uh, go to the Facebook page and sign up. But uh, thanks for coming, and hopefully this was helpful. I'm going to go ahead and stay around now for uh, you know, 20 minutes. If you guys have questions, go ahead and type them into the the comment box on the on the YouTube video. And uh, I would love to help out any specific questions that you may have. Loopcommunity.com um, So Patrick Anderson is asking if this video will be available later, and yes it will. It'll be on our YouTube channel, so you can share it with your friends or watch it again if you need a review. Hey Eddie, uh, you should have gotten a digital download of Ableton Live if you purchased it. So send us an email at support at and we'll make sure we get we get that to you. Any any questions? Just go ahead and post them in the comment box on the YouTube page, and uh, I'll uh, stick around and help if I can. One thing that I do want to actually uh, talk about is what happens if you want to play a song that you don't have a track for? So if you don't have a track for a song, let's go ahead and make it, let's right click and go to create or insert scene and I'm going to call this revelation song because this is going to be our fifth song. Now notice that, and I'm going to right click also on it and let's set the tempo. So we're going to do it at 76 BPM. 
and at 4-4. Now, if you're not currently playing to a metronome, um, oh, and this is, this is actually perfect, because this answers a question from Paul about this. So, if you're not currently playing to a metronome, I highly recommend that you just get your band on a metronome, because your band will sound better just by playing to a metronome, onto a click. So if anything, even if you don't have tracks, at least use Ableton to get your band on a metronome. If you don't even want to get Ableton Live, you can download a bunch of free metronome apps in the App Store. Um, we even have one called Loop Community Prime, so check that out. If you go to loopcommunity.com, um, um, where's this window? Here it is. Just go to uh, Tools and go to Prime. We have an iPad app that you can use just to play metronomes back and forth. Um, but you can also play back all your multi-tracks in it as well. So check that out if that uh, might interest you. We also have a webinar where we're going to be talking about that more. But let's go back and talk about Ableton Live and how we would actually run it just a metronome. So notice that if I hit play on this song, it doesn't do anything. It's not playing. If I click this one, it does. It plays a metronome. Let me stop this audio. One, two, three. But if you play Revelation Song, it doesn't do anything. And the reason it's not doing anything is because there's nothing in this row for Ableton to play. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go to Create and Insert MIDI Track. I'm going to call this MIDI Track. We're going to rename it and call it just Click Only. And then I'm going to double click right here in that clip slot, and it made a blank MIDI clip for me. And I can move this over to the left-hand side of the screen just to kind of hide it and put it away. Now that there's something there... Ableton will play the metronome. Let me go move both of these back to stereo. And that's how you can then use it to uh, use for metronome tracks. So if you want, you could duplicate this. So I'm going to right click and duplicate, duplicate. You could even rename your songs here. So I could call it Revelation, and then this one could be Holy is the Lord, and this one could be Open the Eyes. Those are some oldies. And then you could rename them here if you want and set the tempo, holy is the Lord, at, you know, 98, whatever that tempo is. Now you're using Ableton as just a uh, metronome, which is really great. Cool, do you guys have uh, any any other questions at all? Intro, intro, two, three, four. Cool, so it looks like uh, we may have answered everybody's questions here. So uh, if you're interested in our other webinars, just go to our Facebook page. So let's go to Facebook. I'm going to show you. Um, if you go to Loop Community, go to Events, it's going to list all of our webinars here. We've got our next one is Intro to Loop Community on July 7th. We're going to talk about just uh, all the different services that Loop Community has. And then uh, on July 8th, Christian Ponsford really brilliant guy over in the UK, one of our trainers at Loop Community as well, is going to talk about using an advanced Ableton template that he has available at Loop Community. That's July 8th. July 15th, Christian is also going to talk about um, using Ableton and OnSong together for uh, automating core charts. 21st is Intro to Prime, our iPad app. 
On July 22nd, we're going to do a webinar on Ableton and ProPresenter, so check that out. That's going to be cool. And then after that, it's Intro to Looptimus, the foot controller. So go ahead and check this out. Please invite your friends. Help us spread the word about these summer webinars. It's kind of a new thing we're doing. And it would be great to uh, just have your help if you could just uh, invite your friends that you know would be interested and that this would be helpful. Um, but I'm glad you guys came today. If you guys have any questions at all, find us on Loop Community. Um, there's a section on the website called Blocks where people in the community are just talking and asking questions. And Also, this month, our featured artist of the month is Hillsong, and we have a free download of Christ is Enough with a chord chart and a loop track, so check that out as well. But anyway, glad you guys came, and hope you have a great afternoon. Thank you.